we're just going to do one extra step for this volume shading from the previous tutorial. So I'm just going to go through these steps really, really quickly. Uh, again, go to Cycles Render. Actually, what we should point out is, as I've done before, if I change my Blender Render to my Cycles Render, and for me, as I've said many times, I like to have this little window down here in the bottom corner so I can preview in Cycles without... Um, <clears throat> just do it kind of more quickly without overtaxing the system. All right, so if, if, I, if you really like that setup, which I do, I will press Control u and save that startup file. So now whenever I start a new Blender file, regardless of what I've done to the interface, I get back to exactly what I had uh, when I pressed Control u It's kind of like Total Recall when they flash his eyes and then that's the last thing he can remember because everything else didn't matter because you go back to that state. That's sort of what's going on here. I'm sure no one remembers that movie. Okay, so we're going to make our nodes for this volume setup and we're going to get rid of the surface. We're going to do a um, volume absorption and a volume scatter, as we described in our previous tutorial. We're going to combine those with an add shader and we're going to plug that add shader into the volume. Now, if you want to see what's going on here, look at my previous tutorials. I give more information, more details on that. Just to make this a little more interesting, give it something to... to look at. Um, move that cube up. 001 pixels just takes that funky intersection off the bottom. We're going to input an RGB value that we can go into both colors, as we've mentioned before. And uh, then we'll have some kind of density controller, like a Voronoi texture, that can go into both density channels. So now if we were to, say, change the color, and if our light were bright enough, we could see some color in that and so forth. And there's obviously, you know, things we can do with the textures and so forth. We're not going to worry about that so much today. In fact, I'm going to delete all those inputs. And now I'm going to group them here. And what you'll notice is because I had no inputs going into these three when I grouped them by pressing Control G, there are no inputs there. But what I can do is I can do the color into it and the density into it like that. And then the color down and the density down. Did that make sense? If it didn't rewind, play it again. It's just, it's, it's an alternate approach to what I showed in the previous tutorial to add inputs and outputs. Um, as always, you can press the letter N and come into this interface, inputs, outputs, and you can do them all manually. <clears throat> Pardon me, manually. Color, density, I like to do all caps. And instead of saying shader, I like to say to volume. <clears throat> Pardon me, got a bit of a cold here. And I'm going to name this basic volume shader. Now, as we've uh, mentioned, we can plug that into the density now, and it will work nicely. Plug the color into the color. We could do something like add a math node and make that multiply and multiply it by 15, and it makes it a lot more dense. We could add another math node and make this, say, a less than node. And uh, by playing around with those settings, we can create this little ball texture. Now, obviously, this isn't exactly something you're going to do all the time. It doesn't have a lot of uses. This is just useful, I think, for demonstration purposes uh, to understand what's going on in here. Okay, so this is where we were before. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this volume shader, and we want to be able to use it for future Blender projects without having to go through all these steps again, just like how we wanted to change from Blender internal render engine to the Cycles render engine and make this little window down here. We just want to make it part of our default setup that we can access this thing. So here's how you do that. Uh, we are going to save this file. I'm going to call this basic volume shader. And now I'm going to make a new project file, reload startup file. And you will see I've got this lower window and cycles render because I set that up. Now I'm going to press Shift F1. By pressing Shift F1, I am telling it to go into another Blender file and take some element of that Blender file and append it to my current Blender file. I'm going to select that. I'm going to go into Node Tree 
and basic volume shader is there. Under node tree, if you've made any groups, they will show up under node tree. So again, I click on my blend file and it brings up all these different things that could be in there, like objects, meshes, and so forth. I'm going to choose node tree. I'm gonna choose the basic volume shader. I'm gonna click a pen from library. And now I'm gonna go into my node editor. And I'm being very careful here not to change anything else in the interface because I'm gonna turn this into a new default file. And so I don't wanna be changing anything else that I'm gonna regret later on. Node editor, you'll notice that nothing is there. There is nothing here. And if I try to do anything, it simply won't let me. But if I choose use nodes, and I go into group. So let me explain. What I'm doing is I'm up adding material to this center cube. And I press Shift A, group. Now the basic volume shader is there because I'm using nodes. OK. And we can see this basic volume shader. Now the one trick to what I'm about to do is you have to click the letter F right here over the node. And what this is called is a fake user. Okay, by clicking that letter F, you'll notice right away it has the number two, meaning this basic volume shader is being used twice. It's being used right here where we're looking at it, and it's also being used for the whole project file. What that means is when you quit Blender and reopen a Blend file, Blender kind of strips itself of anything that's in there that's not being used. It just kind of takes out the trash. So if I weren't using this basic volume shader by deleting it right now, like I just did, if I quit Blender and restarted it, it wouldn't save, it wouldn't have that file available for me because I wasn't using it anywhere. I wouldn't be able to access that group. But because I've created a fake user for it, now it will be available. So I'm gonna go back into my 3D view. I haven't changed much from my default settings. I've changed two things. One, I've added a material to this cube, which I'm fine with having that happen. So I'm gonna leave that. And I've added this basic volume shader <clears throat> and made it a fake user. Now I'm going to press Control U, Save Startup File. Okay. And now again, do whatever you're going to do just to show that it's doable. And uh, press Reload Startup File. And now, if I want to mess around with volumes, see, I can delete that. A Group Basic Volume Shader is now a part of my default blend file so I can immediately access it. And you can do this with lots of things. And in my defaults, I have uh, various groups, node groups for various purposes um, that I use. I'm using a, just Blender's default startup file for this tutorial. Um, but whatever you seem to use a lot in your node setups, you can just create groups and one by one bring them in, save them as your uh, default user settings, and you'll just be able to access them very, very quickly. So that's uh, just kind of a simple way to be able to access these groups regularly without having to go back through all the motions of creating the node setup. And that's it. I hope this is useful, and I hope you have a good day.